Welcome to the Dating Kinky Podcast, a cast about love, sex, romance, and kink. Last night, the night before I wrote this and recorded this, I hosted a mingler. It's a local kink event that I started to connect people. And it was amazing. About 40 people who don't know each other, forced to talk, until the momentum takes them and they're a happy, friendly, accepting crowd conversing on games, sparkle shoes, swinking, gender, and more. And when we had spilled out of doors to the street side spark to the street side drinking space, a large and loud truck went by. Cue the usual jokes about masculine size compensation. I stopped them. One, because shaming the size of a penis is no more acceptable in my mind than shaming the size of a body. It's not right, and I will always, always, always speak up against it. Two, because... While size matters, it's not in the way that most people think. At least, not to me. All penises have positive and not so positive qualities to me. The smaller ones, for example, may not be great for hitting the cervix, but are fun to give blowjobs to. My jaw doesn't hurt. I can wrap my tongue all the way around and play tricks I can't with larger members. And frankly, the smaller dicks have a way of hitting my G-spot near the front of my vag in a way that a larger member rarely does. So I'm not here for any non-consensual small penis humiliation. But for consensual Oh, hell yeah. And that brings me to today's topic. SPH. I've always looked for the tiny treasures. My mother started collecting tiny things when she was six. As a child, I was fascinated with her collection. A small landscape painted on a grain of rice. A beautiful high boy less than an inch tall with working doors and drawers, an ivory ball no bigger than an inch with multiple layers of beautiful carvings. But, of course, I was not allowed to touch because I could harm the tiny things. My fascination never left me, though, and throughout life, I've looked for the tiny treasures in the world around me. Violets growing up from a crack in the pavement in New York City fascinated me. A doll hand lying on a leaf by the sidewalk. A small glass bead that looked like a fairy dropped it in a city street. I can remember many that I've spotted over the years in vivid detail. This past weekend, I went on a 10 mile hike in West Virginia. I was there with a group of friends, but I got away for three hours to spend time in the woods trekking along and taking pictures of tiny treasures. The theme, small things that made me feel. The rules, nothing larger than my iPhone 12 mini. I'll post links to a few of my favorites in the show notes. My first shot of the day was a beautiful little flower nestled into the leaves, small and proud, made my heart smile. The largest tiny I found was maybe three inches across. The gills of that amazing fungi were just so sensitive and delicate and beautiful. Far away, it looked sort of meaty and out of place. Up close, though, the wonder of it was damn near overwhelming. 
A tiny canyon landscape was the inside of an old stump with new life growing. No matter how small there is life and desire and the need to grow, even in the most awkward of circumstances. Some little fungi surprises just hit my heart. They were so beautiful, looking more like something from under the ocean than found on a forest floor. None more than three quarters of an inch, but startling in their intensity, even at that size, making their way in the world. And a little bee, diligently and happily working for what he wants and needs. He's there to do what has to be done. And part of his life is doing for his partner, the flower, opening her up, coating himself in her pollen and sharing her with others. And these small, bright white, almost blue white fungi were just amazing. Almost like little geodesic domes. Their structure up close was so intricate and astonishing. The fact that they were tiny, maybe three eighths inch at the largest, had no impact on their complexity or purpose in the greater scheme of things. And as I hiked and mused that good things do indeed come in small packages much of the time, I also thought about how we don't often appreciate the tiny treasures. How I fully and deeply disagree with don't sweat the small stuff and how I've often referred to my partner's <laughs> down below bits as my button mushroom when he's soft since he's a grower and not a shower. And I thought about this writing I would write and how much I adore the man who's become a core of my life and how much I appreciate him for who he is and how I would dedicate this writing to him because it's all about him, every word. And if you haven't yet caught on, this is quite possibly my sweetest, gentlest, most inspired small penis humiliation piece ever. All to say how much I adore him and to fulfill his public humiliation kink. Fun note, he told me later that day he was thinking about me the entire time he was mountain biking and I hiked. I told him I was thinking of him, too. <laughs> what do you love or appreciate that you feel is often overlooked? In life? In partners? Let's share the oddities, the tiny things, the not quite usual, the amazing, and the curious. Thank you for joining me today. If you loved this episode, please share it with others who would enjoy it. And please do join me on our new apps available in the Google Play and Apple App Stores. Dating Kinky, it's built by kinksters for kinksters, poly, queer, trans folk, and anyone not quite vanilla, and it's free. Find me on FetLife as Nookie Notes, and on Twitter, Pinterest, YouTube, Facebook, and Medium as Dating Kinky. We're on Instagram as Dating Kinky Official, all one word. Also, find me in the new Moan app in beta for iPhone. I'm Miss Nookie there. T-H-E-M-O-N-A-P-P dot -P com. Have a kinky day, and I'll catch you next episode. <laughs>